Police in, in Yorkshire have shot dead the man they wanted for three murders. Barry Prudham was fatally wounded after a shootout this morning at Malton Tennis Club. He'd refused to surrender and had shot at police officers who returned his fire. Prudham had managed to evade arrest for 17 days. Hundreds of police had been searching for him in the Malton area. Nicholas Witchell reports. For more than a week, the search has covered thousands of square acres. In the end, police cornered Barry Prudham just a few hundred yards from Malton Police Headquarters. To the surprise of the police, it seems he'd been in the town all the time. Yesterday, he took an elderly couple hostage in their home. He left them unharmed but tied up at 3 a.m. But Prudham's feet were badly blistered, and he tried to hide a few yards away in a tennis club. The elderly couple struggled free, raised the alarm, and police moved in. They spotted Prudham in the sports club shortly after 8 o'clock. Armed officers surrounded the area. Some crouched behind walls, others moved in behind large bulletproof shields. Police then asked for stun grenades and CS gas, hoping that Prudhomme could be taken alive. An army helicopter flew in two specialists dressed in civilian clothes. But moments later, there were more shots. It was in that exchange that Prudhomme was fatally injured. His body was found lying behind a brick wall in the middle of the town, a few hundred yards from the police station. On the first day of the Aslef strike over flexible rostering, British Rail say a significant number of Aslef drivers reported for work in defiance of the union. Several hundred trains did run, but BR admit the services they provided were patchy. The Aslef leader, Mr Ray Buckton, says his men are united despite what he calls a massive publicity campaign against them. Ian Ross reports from Southern Region, which managed the best service. There was no pressure on the ticket office at Charing Cross Station. Would-be passengers were few. On a normal Sunday on Southern Region, 3,000 trains run. It was fewer than one in 20 today, but then an Aslef strike usually means none at all. 26 drivers booked on for work, about half of them Aslef men, says BR. Why had a member of Aslef and a driver for 15 years, Derek Hodges, decided to defy the strike? Well, Buckton's getting up my nose at the moment. This, um, those two day strikes that we had over the past, you know, that seven yeah, weeks. Yeah, you know, We lost, I don't know how much money we must have lost, and it proved nothing. Then he took out the three minutes past 12 train to Dover Priory with only half a dozen on board. Only tomorrow will show whether Derek Hodges is representative of many more Aslev members or just one of a small minority prepared to go against union instructions. In the United States, they're celebrating Independence Day and the safe return of the Space Shuttle Columbia. Our science correspondent David Wilson reports. Seven days and one hour after launch, the Columbia orbiter came into land at the end of its final test flight. From now on, the space shuttle has to be a regular commercial and military vehicle. Today's landing was perfect and very speedy on the long runway at Edwards Air Force Base in the California desert. A huge Independence Day holiday crowd was led by President and Mrs. Reagan in welcoming home the astronauts Thomas Mattingly and Henry Hartsfield. It was very much an American affair, demonstrating their belief in the military and commercial advantages the shuttle can bring in the same week that the Russians demonstrated the power of their space program by taking a Frenchman on their latest flight. That's the end of the news on two. Our last news of the day is on BBC One at 10.20. If you're not joining us, good night. <laughs>